Hi, I'm Andrew Trendle. You're watching Enemy, and we're here at Reading 2022 with Jason from Fever333. How you doing, man? Doing well, man. Thanks. How are you holding up? This is like the end of festival season, right? This is it. This is the end. Um, good. I feel good. I'm, I'm happy to be uh, culminating here at Reading and Leeds. It's pretty, I don't know, good way to do it, I think. The legendary Reading and Leeds. Oh, you, iconic. Do you feel the legacy when you step in? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think it's kind of hard not to, and you'd be... Uh, a liar if you didn't <laughs> you know I, th I think it's kind of quite obvious and we grew up loving watching videos from this and you know legendary performances so yeah we're stoked have you ever stepped out into the field and kind of uh, tasted some of the famous Reading and Leeds cuisine I feel like I have but it was probably just like chips or some shit you've never had a Yorkshire pudding full oh, of gravy what? what's that I don't even know what that is it's this is a thing it's really hard to describe a Yorkshire pudding it's like it's it's, it's not black pudding, is it? No, no, no. Black pudding's amazing. Black okay. pudding's like a sausage kind of thing. Yorkshire yeah, yeah, pudding yeah. is like batter, but it's like a bowl made of batter. A bowl. And you can put anything you want in there. Like. Oh, no, but that sounds fire. I might have to go and do that after this. Yeah, put that on your rider. I will. <laughs> Yorkshire pudding. Yorkshire pudding. Please. Full of gravy and mystery meat, if possible. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> but the last time you played it was uh, 2018. What are your memories of, of that and um, stepping like your first reading? Yeah, fantastic. I mean, again, that was our first time as this project playing, and it was about a year into us being in wow. existence. Yeah. So it was a really incredible crash course in being a a band at a festival. Yeah, you know, I, I think that we we've been in a, we've been in other bands before, and we've done other things. And, and my other band actually played has played here multiple times. But something about bringing this project to this setting at the time too you know 2018 yeah. we were you know opening our eyes up to things that are happening around us a little bit more understanding you know things that need to change and things you know the desires that more people have so it was a pretty powerful position um to be in or at least feeling the power of this festival in that position as yeah. a band it was cool that's a baptism of fire though yeah <laughs> yeah it's true yeah it's true but i don't know i feel like i feel like all you can do is, is give yourself up to it, right? Yeah, yeah. All you can do is give yourself up to the crowd, the, the the festival itself, the essence. And that's just really what we did. We tried to offer something to it versus uh, feeling like we necessarily deserve to be there. Yeah. It was like working for it, yeah. you know? Well, speaking of like surrendering yourself to the crowd and the sense of occasion, the last time I saw you was at Mad Cool oh, when you yeah. stepped on stage with Deftones. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was the last night of their tour. That was one of the best times I've seen Deftones. I mean, yeah. tell us about that, man. I mean... Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's it's like a dream. Like, you know, it's not real to me. Being, quite literally, the reason I said I wanted to be in a band, like, to start playing rock music in a band was because I saw Chino jump off of the PA stack yeah. at the Velodrome at Northridge at the 1996... Warp tour. Yeah. Just I happened to walk in. My dad knew somebody. We walked in for a second. Yeah, saw the that. High socks and everything. Yep. Like. High socks. The uh, Dickies down here. Bleached hair. I was like, I want to do that. Uh, so from to go from that to becoming a huge fan, obviously, then just a few months ago, a couple months ago, <laughs> being on stage with them singing, you know, a song from um, Around the Fur, like the first album I got from them. Yeah. It's beyond a full circle moment. It's like a simulation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's broken, but it's benefiting me yeah. in that moment. You never just stand back and you're like, Gino! Oh, <laughs> dude, I mean, honestly, when, and the thing about that was, I was just watching, because we're, we're like homies now, so I was just watching, but the moment he was like, he beckoned, he was like, come sing this part. D didn't tell him, just come sing. Yeah. I, I turned back into a fan. It's like getting <laughs> up to, I almost felt like I had crowd surfed, crossed the barrier, got on stage, and got to grab the mic. That's what it felt like. Yeah. You know? Do you guys have a relationship now? Do you think there could be a collab? <laughs> I mean, that would be, be cool. Pretty I think, good, pretty good. <laughs> I feel like Chino is the one person in, in rock music, one of the few that I see and, and observe as being like truly authentic about the, again, the hybrid, really understanding hip hop and rap and rock yeah. and trip hop and these things that I find to be extremely attractive in, in alternative music. And putting them all together, he's one of the best to ever do it. Yeah. So, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Yeah. You know? Well, going back to that weekend in Madrid, there's this is quote we got from you on stage where you said, um, we're here to remind the people of their power, the people's power. And I'm just wondering, like, right now, with the world 
unraveling a little bit more than it was before. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that life's about to get a lot worse yeah. for the most vulnerable people. Could you sense that people might be kind of sensing their own power a bit more and that would like something might change? But or have we have we always been unraveling? Like Yeah, I believe that fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you wanna you know, what perspective you wanna ap apply to it. I think that we don't know until a lot of people just don't know until they're pushed to the point yeah. where they have to figure it out, right? Where they have to know. And if there's any silver lining I'm going to glean from this, because I, I need to in order to stay hopeful, is that uh, we've put ourselves as a species in a position um, where we need to, we, we have to figure it out. Yeah. We're at the end of, I mean, this is uh, ecologically, environmentally, uh, systemically throughout the world, pretty much. Yeah. You know, trying to find a way to uh, protect ourselves from ourselves we're there yeah like we're at the we are at the precipice yeah it's either we're gonna fall or we're gonna jump and we if we if we make the jump we'll find another uh cliff to hang from <laughs> and hopefully fix ourselves there but if we fall i, I don't know if we have a parachute yeah. i really don't do you think this will be the generation to actually change things because obviously a lot of a lot of old values are tied to the past I feel like the evolution is not only inevitable, inevitable but it is um, ostensible. Like it's very clear to me, having children, young children, seeing the lack of blemish and tarnishing of their minds in a hateful way. Yeah. You know, naturally, that I can have children that don't use certain words if they don't get taught them. Yeah. Don't uh, don't apply ideologies that are you know, negative towards others if they don't get taught. Knowing that's a real thing, having children has been the biggest element of hope that I've had in my life. Yeah. Like beyond even being a naive young person, now I see it in real time. I have an actual like physical manifestation of, of that hope. So yeah, I have to believe that. And I do, I believe that this generation, my children's generation, they will be the, the ones to change things because again, they have to. Yeah. I'm going to be gone. <laughs> They're going to have to be the ones to do it. Amen. So. And it's been uh, three years since uh, Strength in Numbers, two years since the Wrong Generation EP. What can you tell us about uh, progress on new material? It's there. It's where um, I'm wrapping the album in the next month, and I'm very excited about it. And w all sort of self-aggrandizing elements aside, for better or for worse, whether people love it or hate it, I think that I've created my idea of a genre defining album oh, nice. in that I've wanted that yeah. I've wanted to hear my whole life I finally created at least songs and elements uh, of, of what that really means to me so I'm, I'm really excited I'm really excited to offer something that doesn't even necessarily get fit into a, a, a place but rather runs concurrently in the progress that is art and music oh, nice. you know it's in its own lane hopefully yeah so I was going to ask you about sound, but that's probably, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, it's just a lot of, <laughs> uh, the best way to describe it would be authentic and tasteful hybridizing of the things I talk about. Punk rock, rock and roll, metal, hardcore, rap, hip hop, spoken word, yeah. you know, uh, a little bit of trip hop, a little bit of break, like, and I mean this, I mean this like the most sort of like etymologic, like, et you know, I mean the words I'm saying tasteful and authentic like yeah. really really finding a space that is authentic to me and then applying it versus genre sampling taking things off the shelf throwing them in the pot and hoping they work yeah, yeah these are the most authentic representations i can offer amazing yeah and lyrically what's the uh, the new material deal i mean obviously with you know the shit stew that surrounds yeah us. it's my emotional relationship with um politics uh the systems policy but my, the last, the last, all the previous Fever stuff was as observational. Yeah. It's what I saw. It's what I've studied. This is experiential. This is how I've. This is what I've experienced. Uh, these are my truths, and it's also the first time that I'm actually talking about myself mm. within it versus all of us. Um, understanding myself is like, although microcosmic, um, we are all interconnected. So my story will does relate to others in some other ways it's just finding a way to offer that in a digestible manner oh, amazing. and i think that i've I, I don't know i mean i i've taken that leap to just again disclose my own relationship 
with the things that I've lamented in the past. Nice. Yeah. Do you think we'll hear it this year or? No. Okay. I mean, you'll hear singles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But nah, the album won't be out this year. Okay. It'll, it, no. <laughs> be patient. Yes, please. For now, Jason, enjoy your night. Enjoy Appreciate your Yorkshire you, pudding, man. Yeah, I will. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Thanks for the suggestion.